This Shabbos, Gimel Tammuz, we observe the 28th Yom Hilula of the Lubavitcher Rebbe. I encourage you to please do an additional mitzvah before or on Shabbos in his merit. The name of this week's Torah portion is Korach. Korach was a cousin of Moses and Aaron, and he along with fellow rabble-rousers challenged the authority of Moshe. He offers an alternative to the current hierarchy of the Jewish nation. He proposes that we are equally holy, as we all have a spark of God within us. We are all created in the image of God, and as such, it is unnecessary to have a leader. It is unnecessary to have a high priest as a spiritual guide. We are just as godly as the high priest. We are just as Jewish as Moses. The concept of having a Rebbe, of having a spiritual mentor, is totally unnecessary, and therefore in his mind, Moses only made up these positions in order to gain power and control over the people. For really, he was no better than anyone else. He gets 250 prestigious followers on his team, and they begin protesting against the so-called paragraph of Moshe, and they try to tear down all the boundaries that they set in place. And the question must be asked, what was so terrible about Korach's complaint? Seemingly, his complaint was legitimate. Since the people are all holy, each one of them possess a spark of godliness. Why should one person be exalted? Why then did God support Moses and Aaron? Why was Korach wrong? Seemingly everything he said is 100% true. To resolve this question, we must deepen our understanding of a Jewish leader or of a Rebbe. Certainly the entire nation was holy. But to express that holiness, the Jewish people needed to be motivated and inspired. That requires a leader, a Moses. A true leader empowers people to realize their own potential and to express it. Absent such leadership, even though people possess positive qualities, it's very possible that they will be lazy or unaware and fail to manifest them. Although we all possess the spark of God, it was the responsibility of Moses to bring that godliness into revelation. And we see this so clearly in our history, specifically with the Jews in the desert. Certainly they possessed the potential, as we all do, but there were so many occasions where they failed to live up to their potential. Moses' leadership motivated them to push forward and express who they really were. Moses was not given his position to control others or for personal honor. He was charged with a mission and he followed it faithfully. Rather than think of himself, he thought about his people and what he could do for them 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. This is not merely a story of the past. In every generation we must seek leaders, people who will spark us to utilize the positive qualities we were all blessed with by God. Rather than fear submission to their authority, we should welcome it, understanding that it will enhance our position and not detract from it. Following the guidance of a leader enables a person to accomplish more than he could on his own initiative. At the same time, we must understand that leadership is not restricted to a select few. In our homes, at our workplaces, in our social environments, we all serve as leaders from time to time. When we are given such a position, we must emulate the selfless dedication shown by Moses to inspire and motivate and not to seek personal advancement. In our generation, we were privileged to have such a faithful leader. Never one to let people get away with mediocrity and never doing the work for you. Always there to assist the individual in becoming the best version of themselves. Always inspiring us to live aligned with our mission in this world. Mr. Yehuda Avner worked for five Israeli prime ministers And at one point, he served as a liaison between them and the Rebbe. He had spent much time with the Rebbe in private, debriefing him on critical matters pertaining to the Jewish people in our Holy Land. In the comments section below, I'll post a link to an interview he did in which he describes one of his audiences with the Rebbe that I believe illustrate this idea of what a Rebbe, what a Jewish leader is and should be. Take a couple of minutes and watch it and let me know what you think. With Hashem's help, through the additional mitzvahs and good resolutions being done in the Rebbe's honor, we will merit that this Shabbos be the true great celebration and festival with the coming of Moshiach speedily in our days. Amen. 
I wish you much bracha v'atzlocha. Good Shabbos.